Okay, so 5.5, there's only two parts to 5.5, and I'm going to do the easiest part, easiest part for you, um, and then I'm going to go back and do the harder part. So the easiest part is number four. And disregard the page, I'm going to give you um, a worksheet to do. Okay, so here's part two, and they give you that C, if this is angle C, opposite of angle C is side C, is 9.8, angle A is 14 degrees, and then you have to find the remaining parts of this triangle. So, and it's a right triangle still, so all you have to do is know that a triangle adds up to 180 degrees, and you already know that angle C is 90 degrees, and you know the other angle is 14 degrees, so you should be able to find angle B by process of elimination. So 14 degrees plus 90 degrees makes 104, and then 180 minus 104 gives you this angle right in here, 76 degrees. The directions say find the remaining sides and angle to the nearest tenth. So I already found the three angles. I only have one side, so I have to find the other two sides. So, you can either use soap, cost, koa. So, I'm going to use, I'm going to use the cosine of 14 degrees. Uh, you can use, you could do the 76 degrees too. It's up to you. We're all going to get the same answer. Cosine of 14 degrees is the side adjacent. The side adjacent is B over the hypotenuse, which is 9.8. So take your calculator and do the cosine of 14 degrees and multiply it by 9.8. And B is 9.5. And then do it again. Um, let's do, I'm going to do the sine of 14 degrees. The sine of 14 degrees is the side opposite, which is now the A, over 9.8. Um, to get A alone, you take the sine now of 14 degrees, multiply it by 9.8, and you get side A. I know the picture isn't the best, but side A is going to be 2.4. Um, and that's about it. So that's it for um, finding the missing sides of the triangle. Okay, now comes the next part. So, on your test coming up, or you just had, we had to find the sine of 120. And you drew a picture, and you knew you were in this quadrant, and you knew this was 6, and 16, you knew this was the square root of 3 over 2, so you knew the answer was the square root of 3 over 2. Or, you had the cosine of 225 degrees, and you knew you're in this quadrant, and you know that this is a 45, so it's negative, negative 1, negative 1 over 2, which is cosine is a negative 1 over root 2, which ends up being a negative root 2 over 2. So that's what you've already had. Now comes the twist. This is what it's going to look like now, and this is the only part left in these notes. This is what it's going to look like now. The cosine of x equals a negative root 2 over 2. See the difference? They're going to give you this. You need to come up with the degree. They're going to give you this you need to come up with the missing x value of the 120 degrees. So just take some more thinking. So you have to be good at going in this direction first before you have to go back to this direction. So you got to watch very carefully to figure out there's going to be multiple answers today, and you'll know, you're going to know in a few minutes what I mean by multiple answers. The first thing I want to go over is everybody put sine, cosine, and tangent in quadrant one. Sine, cosine, and tangent in quadrant two. Sine, 
cosine and tangent in quadrant three, sine, cosine, and tangent in quadrant four. And you're gonna think, why are we writing this four times? But there is a huge reason. This is the whole staple on how to do these problems. So you've got to watch very carefully. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go all the way back to algebra. Try to uh, prove a point here. Any point in this quadrant, for example, any point, let, let's just say this point right here is 3, 2. Any point in this um, quadrant is not 3, 2 because I have to go to the left 3 and then up 2. This quadrant, to name a point, would have to be a negative 3, negative 2. And to name a point in this one, it would be a positive 3 and a negative 2. So I hope you know how to plot points. And now you're going to use that, <laughs> you're going to use this right here to help you understand in trig work. So this is what I'm going to talk about. The sine formula, the sine formula is y over r, the cosine formula is x over r, and the tangent formula is y over x. Okay, so good. Okay, now, depending on which quadrant you're in, depending on which quadrant you're in, your y's and x's are going to start changing on you. They're going to be negatives and positives. But on the unit circle, like here's your unit circle, and here's, here's a triangle, your x is positive here, your y is positive here, but your r is never negative or positive. It's always positive sign. The r is always positive, but depending on where you are in your unit circle, now the x is negative, now the y is positive, and now the R again is still positive. So that is very similar to algebra, but now what's my point? Here's my point. If I look over here, sine is Y over R in the first quadrant. R is always positive in all the quadrants. Y is positive, or the sine is positive in the first quadrant. The cosine, or the X value, is also positive in the first quadrant. And the formula for tangent is y divided by x. And if it's y is positive and x is positive in the first quadrant, a positive divided by a positive gives you a positive for your sign. Okay, now we're going to keep going around. You have to know, if you can't figure out your positives and negatives, it's going to be very difficult for you to come up with your answer. Your sign, which deals with y over r, if you think about it, if you look over here, your sine is still positive in the second quadrant. Your cosine is negative. Cosine deals with the letter X, and that's negative. And tangent deals with both of them. Tangent deals with Y over X. So if you put those two signs over each other, the tangent is negative. And now we're going to keep going around. The sine or the y value in the third quadrant, if you're looking over here, is negative. The cosine is also negative. And what happens when you put those two over each other to get tangent? A negative over a negative equals a positive. And now I'm going to quickly finish the sine. Sine is positive in this quadrant, negative in this quadrant. When you put them over each other, you also get a negative. You have to know how to do these without looking at the chart. You just have to know that kind of sine deals with the letter Y, cosine deals with the letter X, and tangent deals with Y's and X's, because the R is always positive everywhere. Okay, now comes the point. Here we go with a bunch of them. I'm going to do a whole bunch of these. This is it. So, so all you have to do on this worksheet is the first part was, or the first part I taught you was how to find the missing side to the triangle. And the second part is doing solving for x. And the stipulation is 0 degrees to 360 degrees, including 0 to 360. What does this entail? It entails all four quadrants from 0 to 360. Those are your answers. So here we go. Where does the tangent of x equal 1? What degrees 
with the tangent of x equals 1. So the first thing you do is you draw yourself your picture. All of these have to be done drawing yourself your x, y, coordinate plane. Okay, now, you have to decide which quadrant is the tangent positive in. Try not to look back at the chart, but just know where the y and the x, the tangent is y over x, go back to algebra, and where would the y and the x be both positive to make a positive, or a negative and a negative to make a positive? It would be in this quadrant and this quadrant. The first and the third is where the tangent would equal a positive 1. And you can go back, if you don't believe me, to show you that tangent is positive in the first and in the third quadrant. Now go back, and what you now have to think about is where, which kind of triangle would it really look like 1 over 1? Your answer says 1, but truthfully, the tangent is really a fraction. It's 1 over 1. So the y and the x values have to be both 1 in order to get 1, or they both have to be a negative 1 and a negative 1. That's why you have to be in the third quadrant to get a 1. And if this is what the triangle looks like, I think a lot of you are like, wow, I know what this triangle looks, looks like. This is a 45-degree triangle. But if you're in the first quadrant, the answer is going to be 45 degrees because you, in the first quadrant, you have to be between 0 and 90. And if you're in the third quadrant, you need to be between 180 and 270. It has to be your next answer. So what's the answer going to be if you're between 180 and 270? I went past the 180 marker by 45 degrees or 225. These are my two answers where the tangent of x can be put on. And that's the gist of all of what I'm teaching you. And we're going to end up doing another five more examples, hoping that you're going to catch on to this. Okay, let's do, let's do a negative for this one. Let's change it up. Let's do the sine of x equals a negative one-half. Let's do the sine of x equals a negative one-half. So try to not look back at your chart. Sine deals with y over the r. Well, the y needs to be the negative one, and the r has to be the two, because the r can never be a negative number. It's the radius of your unit circle. Where, back in algebra, when you graph points, would the y value have to be a negative value? Wouldn't you have to be in these two quadrants where your y values are a negative one, and the radius is two? So quickly, I made my picture, because I knew it's all about the signs. If you don't know how to figure out which quadrants you're dealing with, you're going to have a hard time with it. That's why I went really slow on the first template. And then you said, wait, I know the side opposite of a negative 1 is a 30-degree triangle. But that can't be my answer. That's just called my reference angle. My actual answer to this problem, there are going to be two answers where the sign of x equals a negative 1 half. One answer is going to be between 180 and 270, which is 210. How did I get 210? I took 180 and I added it to the 30. Uh, and then my other answer is going to be 330. And how did I get 330? Because you always go off the x-axis, because my triangle always is working off the x-axis. So 360 take away 30 is 330, and 180 plus 30 makes 210. So those are my two answers to this one. And we're just going to keep doing more and more of these. And then I'll give you a worksheet. Where is the cosine of x going to equal the square root of 2 over 2? Which two quadrants with the cosine of x equal the square root of 2 over 2? Or you say to yourself, cosine is x over r. You go back to algebra and you go, wait, where is the x positive in, in algebra? Which quadrant for your x positive then? x was positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant because we go to the right x unit. So you're in those two quadrants. Like I said, that sign is very important. See, okay, now comes the flip. If I labeled it, if I labeled it the square root of 2 over 2 and I put the x square root of 2 and I made the radius 2, you're going to look at that and go, wait a second, that's not a triangle that I've been practicing on. 
I've never seen a triangle that looks like that. You're right. Because the answer that you put, the answer that you put is the simplified version. So you need to come over here and say, wait a second. I need to change this to 1 over root 2. Because 1 over root 2 used to be the answer before I simplified it to root 2 over 2. The x is 1, and the radius is the square root of 2. And if that's 1, that's root 2. That means this is 1, and that means this is a negative 1. It doesn't matter that that's a negative 1, because I'm doing only the cosine type. And the cosine is the x value over the i, and the x value over the i. So, now you say to yourself, what kind of triangle deals with a 1, 1, root 2? Well, that's a 45 degree triangle, and if you're in the first quadrant, it is 45 degrees. But if you're in the fourth quadrant, and this is 45 degrees, you have to take 360 minus 45, which is 360. Final answer. Okay, now we're going to put a twist in it. We thought you had it, but now we're going to put a twist in it. I made triangles in number one, I made triangles in number two, and I made triangles in number three. In number four, I am not going to make a triangle. The reason why is because I notice that my answer to the problem is zero. And I know that my triangle that I have studied either is one, one, or a two, or a negative one, two, and this would be a negative root three. There is no zero in any one of those triangles that I study. So I know I can't make a triangle in this problem, but I know that I learned something else in this chapter. I learned that you can also not make a triangle, that you can be right on the axis. And even as the teacher, I will label all four of these. I'm going to label all four of these to understand and you can notice now that there's a zero as your answer, and there's a whole bunch of zeros down on my paper. But i got to figure out which one, what's the degrees? That's what we're trying to find. X stands for the degrees now. So we have to figure out the degrees. So first of all, I'm going to write the formula down. Tangent is Y over X. Well, again, you got to think backwards. You have to think that if the answer is zero, the numerator has to be zero. Because if the zero is in the denominator, it's the undefined for no solution. So you know that the y value has to be zero. The x could be one. Or, could the x also be a negative one? Because what's zero divided by one? And what's zero divided by a negative one? Would you get zero if you had one or a negative one in the denominator. So the y value has to be zero. So I'm going to circle it in red. These are where my y values are zero. And these are where my x values are one and a negative one. So my answer to this problem is zero degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Because if you look at the stipulation, I can go look back at my stipulation. I have a line underneath the 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So I have to call 0 and 360 as part of my answer. Okay. I think we should do two more. If you want to stop, you can stop if you understand what you're doing and try to do them on your own. Or you can do two more with me. It's up to you. You can stop and try to do these on your own or maybe do two more with me. Okay, let's do a secant and a cotangent, the reciprocal one. It's the same concept. You still got to make a picture. You still got to make a picture. Secant. I have it. This feels. This is the reciprocal of cosine. And cosine is negative. Cosine is negative. It's your x value. Cosine stands for x. So x's are to the left. You have to go to the left. So your cosine is negative in these two quadrants. So is your secant. So is your secant. So just to bring this back one more time, sine and cosecant go hand in hand. They're both positive. Cosine and secant are both positive. Tangent and cotangent. The signs work 
for those other three reciprocal buttons too. So it might be good to keep going on this. Where is the cosine negative? I found out that my pictures are triangle. I know it's a triangle. The dead giveaway is the square root of three. I know I'm dealing with a 30, 60, 90 triangle. But again, there is no, remember, the secant is now going to be r over x. Remember the formula for secant is r over x? But there is no triangle that you memorized that was a negative 2 over 3 over 3. So you have to think backwards again before you simplify it to your final answer. Um, was it a negative 3? No, not, sorry. It was a negative 2 over root 3 was before you simplified it. When you simplify it and you multiply the top and the bottom by root 3, do you see how it gets to the simplified version? You see how you have to work backwards in that? If you learn it one way, you've got to learn it the backwards way. So this is the R, and this is the X. So the R and the X. And you really can't make this the negative. This has to come here because the R is always positive. So this is the 2, and this is the negative root 3. You can't, I kind of have to fix it. The negative can go anywhere it wants to go. So, you know that, obviously, you know that this is 1 and this is a negative 1. What's the um, angle opposite of 1? Little 30 degrees. So, you know one answer is 150 because you're in the second quadrant. And if you're in the third quadrant, you have to be between 180 and 270. And if you add 180 to 30, you get 210. Okay, last one. Where is the cotangent undefined? Well, triangles are not undefined answers. You know that it can't be a triangle because there are no answers for undefined on there. So I know that I have to sit there and do this again, and I write them all out. There it is. And I know my formula for cotangent is x divided by y. And I know that cotangent for it to be undefined, the y value has to be 0. x could be 1, or x could be a negative 1. You still get no solution, no matter if x is 1 or negative 1. Again, where is the y value 0? And where is the x value 1 and negative 1? Your answers are 0, 180, oh, yeah, and 360. And that is it.